Hello, welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. India's drug regulator has launched a probe after the World Health Organization issued a global alert saying cough syrups manufactured by an Indian company made in pharmaceuticals could be potentially linked to acute kidney injuries and deaths of 66 children in Gambia. WHO in its report said that the medicines had unacceptable levels of diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol as contaminants. India's drug standards control organization has launched an urgent probe. Sources say the medicines in question have been manufactured and exported only to Gambia so far and the regulator has sought all reports regarding the linkage of deaths in Gambia with the medicines concerned. Let's understand this further. Where were the lapses? We are now joined by Rajeshwari Hariharan, advocate at the Delhi High Court, and Sanjeet Singh Lamba, CEO of Biocurious Pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Rajeshwari Hariharan, as this probe begins, and the Indian drug regulator also probes this along with Haryana authorities, what are the lapses they need to look out for? I think uh, they need to catch the entire chain because the lapse may be either at Maiden Pharma or it may be because of the actual products that they uh, they actually got it from the manufacturer. We are not sure whether Maiden Pharma was the only manufacturer. They may have got the process, uh, the, the active ingredient from some other company. So the, the entire chain has to be investigated. And it is possible that uh, the manufacturer, you know, overlooked certain uh, criteria in the processes, resulting in high levels of glycol in the final formulation. And that has caused all this problem here. Mm. Right. Uh, Mr. Lamba, coming to you, questions are also being raised that if Gambia was importing uh, these medicines, these four cuff syrups by Maiden Pharmaceuticals, a Haryana-based firm, then they may have tested it or they should have tested it at their own end as well. Uh, and it should have come out in uh, testing by African authorities. Uh, do you think that report will also be critical to this investigation? Thank you, uh, Parikshit. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, that's also a very important report. But I believe that the prime responsibility of this whole issue lies on the manufacturer of this finished formulation. And uh, also, the testing in their lab, what is the data available as of today, I think, the drug authorities need to verify the same, whether the excipients and other raw materials were actually tested and what is the data today with us. Of course, the second important data is there in Gambia, which would qualify the finished product testing for these products. Right, important points there. Also, Mr. Lamba, uh, do you also feel that the facilities of this company will now have to be visited. Uh, the, the government will have to study which particular batch did these medicines uh, really belong to. And as Ms. Hariharan also pointed out, would we also have to check whether there are other companies exporting uh, this formulation of these cuff syrups to uh, importing them or exporting them to uh, other nations? A yeah, very important uh, area. Uh, in fact, this is purely a supply chain security issue today. So this is one issue which has happened. But we have to really look at the whole supply chain, starting from you know procurement of these raw materials, uh, processing of these, uh, testing of these in the quality control lab, and also the finished product analysis. Uh, as I am aware, this is possibly the fourth or a fifth incident uh, which has been reported for contamination of diethylene glycol in propylene glycol, uh, because that's something which is commonly used in the cough syrups as a solvent. It is an onus and the responsibility mm. on the manufacturer to make sure that this impurity is verified and checked in the lab by a proper analysis. There is a gas chromatography uh, process, which is uh, already listed in the Indian pharmacopoeia. And that needs to be followed before this processing of this formulation is started. Of course, a larger area is from the supply chain security point of view, whether this formulation has crossed the boundaries mm -hmm. and reached any other countries or any other areas where it was not required to be supplied. That's a larger serious area. And I think from the risk management point of view, both the WHO as well as the authorities mm -hmm. here in India need to work upon 
from the emergency response point of view, how do we address an issue of leakage of a product mm. across the boundaries? Because as I said, this seems to be a supply chain security issue. All right, you're saying it's a supply chain security issue. Ms. Hariharan, coming back to you, the drug regulators under law, what action can they take against uh, maiden pharmaceuticals? Yes, they have to visit their uh, premises. They must inspect the premises and for, find out whether Maiden had actually followed the GMB practices, whether anything was violated. All of those things must be investigated and they can take action. There is a fine and there was, of course, imprisonment. Uh, this will qualify as an adulterated drug or a misbranded or a spurious drug. It will more qualify as an adulterated drug under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. There, you know, our law must be uh, further teeth must be given to our law. There should be actually penal consequences, really serious, severe consequences. It is only then that the entire chain will come and will align themselves. You know, uh, there we have in our law the good manufacturing practices. If you flout the good manufacturing practices, there are severe consequences, but there is no such severe consequence, there, there is not such a consequence that will compel them to actually only comply and there should be nothing else. There should be no alternative left to them. For, in, for instance, in the current case, they have penalty of 5,000 rupees, imprisonment maximum three years. What is it? The director must be imprisoned and they should not be allowed to make any further products at all, not this product, any product. The entire factory should be shut down. You know, you have you have to have drastic consequences of that nature. It is then that the person will, you know, then the whole right. chain will regulate itself. Then the person, the manufacturer, the uh, formulation right. Sorry, uh, manufacturers will not purchase it from such people. Okay, so, Miss Hariharan, if I if I were to ask you. One thing is to get all the reports from Gambia, from the WHO, as to what went wrong. What were their own testing reports uh, when it comes to Gambia importing uh, these medicines from maiden pharmaceuticals? Then, at the level of the Indian drug regulators, do you feel there may have been some lapse in carrying out the initial testing or approving these uh, medicines? I won't say there is a lapse on the regulator's uh, you know, doorstep. I will not cast the problem at the regulator's doorstep. I would say it is more the manufacturer because uh, you know it's the manufacturer who is really responsible. You see, when there is a new drug, it is approved by the drug controller who is in the center, that is in Delhi. The rest of the drugs, which are old drugs, are approved by the state authorities. Now, sometimes, in some cases, there is some, some kind of a faith, good faith, you can say bona fide whatsoever, of the drug controller with the manufacturer, and they believe the manufacturer, and they say, well, you're making hundreds of drugs, this is bound to be good. And there are some lapses, some laxities in between, and which is something which we cannot avoid, which we cannot afford at this stage. You know, once the regulator is very, very strict, mm -hmm. then everything will align with itself. For example, now you have the US FDA. You cannot have a situation where you have a manufacturing facility in India, which is even lax to the extent of having even small microbe in your lab. The US FDA will come and they will launch an investigation. They will issue 10 objections. It's very difficult to clear them. And then to have your lab certified is a very big task. It should be that difficult, even in India with the state control. If, if, we, if we make it that difficult mm. for the Indian companies, a lot of them will align themselves, will al clean up their activities, and instead of manufacturing mm. something at home, they will actually manufacture properly and follow the good manufacturing practices. This simple issue of having high amounts of glycol in the process is nothing but a process problem. It's nothing, it's, it's not the formulator's problem, it's mm. not a Gambia's problem. It's the problem is in our doorstep. We have hmm. not followed the norms properly okay. and we have not enforced it properly. Hmm. Right. So you're saying that the problem lies with the manufacturer. And my uh, question now to Mr. Lamba. Mr. Lamba, do you feel that uh, other manufacturers who may be making similar medicines, similar formulations, do you think it's, it's time to carry out some 
checks on them as well to make sure there are no lapses, no similar lapses? Of course, you know, this is uh, happening off and on uh, in the last few years. We have seen similar cases of contamination. The last one is 2020 in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, cold west formulation with the same contamination of 30 percent in uh, their cough syrups. And uh, it's very important to look at that so many issues are happening across in different states and also being reported in other parts of the world also. Uh, you may be aware that the first issue of similar nature was reported in the U.S. in 1937, called as an elixir issue. And then finally, U.S. FDA made a number of uh, steps to make sure that there are uh, uh, checks and balances kept in place to make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, unfortunately, this incident has happened. And then, of course, there's investigation which is going on. But I believe, apart from supply chain security, it seems to be a compliance issue because GMP compliance, as I said, is the prime responsibility of the manufacturer. There may be a similar cases in, in the country as well as outside to look at if the suppliers are the same because many times it happens that the supply is made of a cheap excipient or a raw material and the manufacturer, it relies on the certificate of analysis of the supplier instead of testing it in their own lab. It's their responsibility to make sure that it is tested and reported, but many times this is not complied with. And because of that, the certificate of, uh, uh, right. uh, you know, certificate COA is taken from the supplier and passed on with this assumption that the material is safe. But there may be a similar unsafe situations in the country. And we need to really look at a sampling from different uh, states to look at the similar kind of a products which contain propylene glycol and do a random check of what is the situation in these from the impurity of DG in these. Okay. All right. We've run out of time, but uh, Sanjeet Singh, Lamba, and uh, Ms. Hariharan, thank you very much for joining us here on News Center, giving us your view of this very di disturbing incident that has taken place in Gambia. And of course, the Indian drug regulator saying that urgent steps are being taken and all possible measures are being taken to get to the bottom of this. Thank you once again for joining us here on News Center. We are going to take a short break, but coming up on the other side, the government modifies Semicon policy, notifies the changes that it hopes will move more manufacturers to make in India. Discussion with Jaswinder Ahuja of Cadence Design Systems and K. Krishnamurti of Indian Electronics and Semiconductor Association on the other side.